Right, finished version of uh, of this Arduino based gyro product. Uh, there's a, a 4 cell AA battery, give you an idea of the size. Um, it's based on a 80 tiny 85 in a DigiSpark. Uh, and an MPU 6050 uh, gyro module in a little 3D printed case. Um, so to program it with the Arduino IDE, uh, the first problem we have is that the Arduino IDE uh, doesn't support the AT Tiny 85 out of the box. If I launch the Arduino IDE uh, and if we have a look under Tools Board you can see it's not there. These are all the standard ones with a clean install of uh, Arduino as of July uh, 2020. I'm on version 1.8.13 so uh, under that same board thing there's boards manager but unless you've already installed another stage before this it still won't be there if I put in AT tiny it's not there so what we have to do first we go to file preferences and here under additional board manager URLs click on this little thing here and then at the bottom of that let me just zoom in a bit you can see it says or maybe you can't see but it does say click for a list of unofficial boards when you do that you go to a, a sort of website uh, and I'm going to search now for AT Tiny. So I'm going to do Control F, which is the shortcut for search. Put in AT Tiny. And there are several packages that support it. So there's this one that's uh, Mesom, which supports the AT Tiny 85. And there's another one that says AT Mega and AT Tiny cores which has got Leonard Leonardo Milani com as part of the name but the one I've been using and the others might work fine I don't know but the one I've been using is this one um, which says AT tiny uh, raw github user content Demelis D.A. Mellis that is um, and anyway there's a URL there so what you have to do is you copy that URL control C and we can close that now and now we're back to the Arduino IDE and there it's saying enter additional URLs one for each row so we just paste that in and click on OK. I'm going to close the Arduino IDE down, start it up again. I'm going to go to Tools, Board, Boards Manager, and look for. AT Tiny and there it is we've got it now AT Tiny by David A. Mellis um, 1.0.2 install I click on install and we're done now I think so now if we go to just zoom out a little bit you can see the whole screen 
may not be able to read it, but <laughs> you can see the whole screen. Uh, I'm going to close that, make that big, go to Tools, Board, Boards Manager. Sorry, I don't want Board Manager. Tools, Board. And now we can see we've got eight Arduino AVR boards and we've got 80 tiny microcontrollers. And I'm going to go for the top one because it says 80 tiny. 25, 45, 85 and now we have to specify the details so that does 25, 45 and 85 if you can see that and we've actually got an 80 tiny 85 so we select that one and then we also have to tell it what clock we're using which is going to be the internal 16 megahertz clock. So now if we look at the boards we've got uh, we've got 80 tiny 85 internal 16 megahertz clock. So we're there now. Now we're ready to burn the bootloader as it's called. So what I've got here is a uh, we need light on that, a USB ASP and I've made a custom lead for it that ends in two sort of servo style plugs because if we look at the gyro uh, it's got what would norm two leads that would normally plug into your receiver we've got a socket that you'd normally plug a servo into it and we've got a, a fourth lead which is a programming lead which has got uh, violet, blue and green wires and one of these uh, USB ASP things is also violet, blue and green and that goes into there uh, and then we've also got uh, red, white and black and that goes into the red, white and black one so now we've got everything we need to both provide power to this AT tiny board and program it. So I'm now going to plug in the USB ASP to this uh, extension lead. Sounds as though it's found it. Now we're going to burn a bootloader. Um, and what I found is that you have to do this at the slow speed so if you've got a USB ASP like this one um, this little jumper here is for if you want to reprogram the USB ASP itself this one here selects either 5 volts or 3.3 volts out to the device we're on 5 and this third one over here is like a sort of slow fast link if you take it off it puts the thing in slow mode which is what we want so with it in slow mode I'm going to go up to uh, tools burn bootloader and we're not really burning a bootloader but what we are doing is setting the AT tiny to run at that clock speed that we specified the internal 16 megahertz clock right we've got a problem here um, and while burning bootloader cannot find the USB device right what's wrong there I probably have to use uh, Zadig, I'm guessing, to tell it that we've got this USB ASP in here. So Zadig.
Right, USB driver installation made easy. I'll go for that. Zadig.akio.ie. No idea whether that's safe or not. WinZip driver updater. Download Zadig 2.0. Five. We'll save that. Open the folder and install it. Yes. Yes. Right, USB ASP driver none and we actually want this win usb driver install driver right i edited a bit out there because uh, zadig takes ages but basically it did work no problems so once you've got zadig installed you go zadig to run it um, you uh, let's zoom in a little bit on the actual Zadig thing. Um, you say options, uh, list all devices, and it finds the USB ASP. And to begin with. It'll be saying there uh, driver that's available and there it will be saying none and you click on a thing that says install driver and it says this can take up to five minutes. Doesn't actually take five minutes but it does take about a minute. Uh, anyway at the end of that we go back into Arduino, back to where we were. Um, so if you remember I've just gone on about removing the uh, the fast slow link on the USB ASP we got it all plugged in to the gyro and we go tools burn bootloader and it only takes a second because really it's all it's doing is altering the fuses now if we look down at the bottom corner there when I click on burn bootloader you see it's saying, I don't know if you do say it, I'll do it again. So, tools, burn bootloader, and it says burning bootloader, done burning bootloader. It's as quick as that. So now, we want to put the actual sketch into the thing. So, we go, uh, file open and it's called gyro mpu 6050 and we just open that in the normal way uh, we can close the other one now and make that big now this same sketch works on uh, an ordinary nano you know um, or pro mini any of the 80 328 uh, um, 80Mega328P processors but it also works on an 80 tiny 85 uh, and whichever one you're compiling it for the only thing you're likely to have to change is in this config uh, section so we go to the config tab and Hopefully you can see that. Um, rudder input pin 3, auxiliary input pin 1, rudder output pin 4, that's what I recommend leaving them at. Um, the things you might want to change, if you've got too much travel when you actually uh, on your heli use it, 
you would alter these two things where it's got min rudder output 1000, max rudder output 2000, these are in microseconds and ordinary servos go from round about a thousand maybe a bit below up to round about two thousand so one thousand to two thousand is, is typical throw if you're getting too much throw you might make it um, one thousand two hundred up to one thousand eight hundred for example fifteen hundred should be in the middle as fifteen hundred is nominal um, uh, sort of nominal center on, on most radio systems. The other thing is which axis to use. By default we're using uh, this axis with uh, the wires at the bottom turning that way so you'd mount it like that flat in your heli. If you wanted for some reason to mount it that way uh, you'd change this axis Z to axis X and if you wanted to mount it that way up with the wires coming out the top or, or the bottom then it would be axis Y. Axis Z is normal and you've got direction um, now if when you test it on your heli it's correcting in the wrong way you've got two options you can either turn it over turn it upside down but if that's not convenient if you've already got it programmed uh, already mounted you can change direction normal to direction reverse and then the the last two things don't matter if you're using the auxiliary input to set the rate and the gain uh, sorry the the mode and the gain but if if you own if you don't want to use an auxiliary input from your transmitter receiver into the gyro you just want it fixed then you can choose default mode to be either rate mode or heading hold mode it's on rate mode at the moment and the gain uh, I've got default gain 30 again if you're using the auxiliary input it doesn't matter because you change it from the transmitter but if, if you want to use it in simple uh, without that second channel and you fly the thing and decide you want more gyro gain you just alter that. It's basically a percentage. You can actually go above 100 but uh, we're on sort of 30% at the moment. So, um, so that's the only thing you need to alter. Um, once you've altered that... Oh, one more thing. <laughs> three things that the Spanish Inquisition. Um, there's one other thing which is you, you've got here hash define debug commented out at the moment. Um, I'll come back to that later but if you want to you can set the gyro to send debug messages out to a serial port. But that's switched off right now. So we're going to uh, compile it and it should eventually compile. Windows is a bit slow. For some reason Linux is much faster than Windows at compiling. But anyway it says done compiling so now we're ready to upload it. Um, now we can put the USB ASP back into fast mode. This one's still pretty slow for some reason on an AT Tiny but I I don't know why. Um, and because because we're using an a, a USB ASP and you can't program it serially, if we click on this arrow, it's going to upload it using the programmer, which is... Oh, did I mention that you have to set the programmer to USB ASP? Yeah. Uh, yeah, programmer, USB, ASP. So you could go um, sketch. Hopeless this is when you're not zoomed out properly. You could go sketch um, 
uploads using Programmer. But as I say, on an AT Tiny, you can't really program it serially. So just clicking on the uh, on this arrow does the same thing. So I'll click on the arrow. You can see the lights have come on on the USB ASP. And down at the bottom there it says uploading. It does take a, a surprisingly long time, so don't let that worry you. It does get there in the end. I did wonder actually whether the USB ASP was staying in um, in slow mode. Perhaps there's something wrong with the USB ASP. Anyway, it's done it now. It's done uploading, it says. So at this point we can unplug the USB ASP. I'll zoom out a bit because we're... Right, well, um, the camera battery ran down uh, last night when I was trying to film how to set up this gyro. So now it's the next morning. I'm not sure how much of what I filmed before is in the camera, but anyway, we got as far as programming this thing. So I want to carry on now and then we'll have a look what we've got later. Un unplug it from the programmer. Let's get around to actually using the thing. So, on this one, the sort of JR Spectrum coloured servo lead, that one, is the uh, tail rotor input and the Fataba style lead is the auxiliary channel. So, uh, I've got here a little um, orange uh, receiver, and so I'm going to plug, and I've got this one set up so that the, well, I've got the transmitter set up so that the tail rotor is on channel 1, I'll plug that in there, and the auxiliary channel is on channel 2. It's actually only a three channel plus S bus receiver this one, so it's only for demos. Now, it's important that the, uh, the green, blue and violet lead is just for programming the gyro. Don't plug that into any receiver channel. And the socket is where we're going to plug in the uh, the servo. Let's just shut down the lid on this thing so that we perhaps it will focus better. So now we need a battery so we can just connect the battery into uh, into the receiver to power everything up. And that's it, that's all we need. Zoom out a little bit. So if I switch the transmitter on, and I'll turn the server over so we can just see the output on. And if I move the, uh, the rudder stick, as you'd expect the servo moves. Uh, if I rotate the gyro, the servo also moves. So, at the moment we're in um, a rate mode, so when the gyro rotates it causes the servo to be offset. And the faster it rotates, the bigger the offset. 
Now that's rate mode. I'll turn the gain down. I've got it on a dial on this transmitter. So now the gain is very low. The stick still moves the servo, of course, as you'd expect. But now the gyro has a much smaller correcting effect. And then with a the high gain, the gyro has a big correcting effect. Um, that's all one side of zero, and so we're in rate mode. And we go to the other side of zero. It's juddering a bit because the vibration is uh, getting back through to the uh, gyro. So on the other side of zero, um, it's trying. It's heading hold mode. And as the servo rotates, the um, sorry, as the gyro rotates, the servo moves to try and bring the gyro back to its original position. And again, if we turn the gain up, then we need less gyro rotation to get the same servo movement, and vice versa. Now we're in a very low. Uh, uh, heading hold mode gain, so we need a lot of rotation to get the gyro to move, uh, to get the servo to make the same movement. So, as I say, the judder, looks like I need to investigate why this is juddering so much. Anyway, there it is working. Um, now I'll go back and have a look at the, uh, the footage of how you set it up. Uh, oh, the thing I haven't shown yet is how to uh, look at the debug information. So we'll do that next. I'll just uh, cut to that. Right now we're going to set the uh, set the thing in debug mode. So we go into the Arduino sketch. Eventually, and in the config tab. Down in the section that's marked as for editing, just zoom in on the actual bit. There we are, it says hash define debug, and we take away the comments so that that's active. I'll zoom back out. And that's all we've got to change. So now we connect this thing back up. So the green uh, green, blue, violet lead and the white, red, black lead to the USB ASP. Plug the USB ASP in and click on the upload button. And it's compiling. Oh, stray hash in program. I obviously didn't edit it properly. Uh, right, try again. It is uploading. I might do a cut here because it does take a long time. Okay, so a minute later and we're done. Um, unplug the USB 
ASP. Now for debug we need a serial interface. This is the one I'm using at the moment. Just one of those little uh, CR2102 is that? Anyway, all we need is transmit, receive and uh, sorry, receive and we've got 5 volts and ground. Don't really need the 5 volts if we're going to plug in a battery but um, you can power the thing off this providing you don't actually plug a servo in. So this one it's just got white, red and black and it plugs into the white, red and black lead which would normally be the auxiliary uh, radio input so we can't have uh, an auxiliary channel connected when we're in debug unfortunately on the AT Tiny. So that's connected connected to the computer. We need to find out what uh, port we're on. I don't know if we can do that from here. COM3 by the looks of it, COM3. Yeah, the Arduino sketch has found it as COM3. Um, but I'm not going to use the uh, Arduino serial uh, terminal, I'm going to use PuTTY, which is better in my opinion. So we want PuTTY, we want uh, Serial COM3 uh, 9600 board. We don't want any flow control. 9600 N81 COM3, that's about it. Uh, open. Uh, and if we were to uh, reset this thing. Uh, I think it will put some messages up on the screen. There we go. So it says MPU. Let's just zoom in a bit. Come on. Don't know if you can read that or not. It says um, wait, well, probably read what that says now, but if I reset it again, this is the normal pattern. It says it's starting it, it's looking for a result of zero, and then it's calibrating the gyro. And what it's looking for, I'm moving the gyro a bit at the moment, so it's never getting there. But it's looking to get 250 readings in a row. Uh, with the gyro all reading similar. If you leave the gyro still for a bit it'll do that. So now it's waiting for an input from the uh, receiver. So we'll plug in the rudder channel. Right and now I'll make this a bit wider we've got some data scrolling up the screen. So at the beginning it says rate mode 30% which is the chosen mode and the chosen axis they're not going to change uh, because uh, we don't have the auxiliary channel connected. And then the next number is uh, how much it thinks the gyro is moving. If I move the gyro one way fairly slowly, you can see we're getting numbers of about minus a thousand. Move it the other way fairly slowly and get about two thousand. Well, I'll leave it still. We're getting single digits so it's uh, near enough uh, zero. <laughs> then we've got position which is what angle it thinks it has. So it's converted it to degrees. 
I'm not having much luck with this thing. The, uh, the memory card on the camera filled up that time. So anyway, uh, I've swapped over to a different unit here. That's the case. So you can see what it looks like inside. So you can see it's just a MPU 6050 gyro module and it's connected to an ATtiny 85 DigiSpark board with a little USB tongue cut off and it's in between it's all potted up in uh, hot melt glue and when it goes inside the case uh, that's all potted with hot melt glue as well to support the wires bit of a tricky soldering job to connect the wires but anyway um, so here we are connected up it's working uh, I've got a rudder servo plugged in and a battery as well as the uh, debug and you can see if I turn it around it's doing its thing and we already uh, talked about most of this stuff and got as far as the position um, which is an angle in degrees so I'm turning the gyro around as I say this now and if I get it somewhere near zero so that's about zero degrees and as I rotate it you can see the position goes up and up and up and that's about 90 degrees when we get to 180 I'll just try and get the it flips anyway from plus 179 points something to minus 179 so it, it's it's always in the range plus or minus 180 degrees and that's a good way of checking that your gyro is not drifting I mean there we are I've just put it steady now and as you can see we're we're steady on well it's gone what, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a degree. It might even be moving a bit because it's hanging on the wires. Let me try and get it steadier. Yeah. Um, the other thing it shows you is the, the rudder channel input. If I move the stick, you can see with this uh, transmitter we're getting down to about a thousand and eight minimum up to 2044 and the servo output is well, when the gyro is not moving it's following the the input stick of course if the gyro moves that's showing you what's going out to the servo so hopefully that that's it that will be a wrap